single mothers are literally the worst parents on the entire planet. Statistics back that. Over 70% of young men that grow up under a single mother, single mother in particular, end up in prison. So everything that this man just said is a complete lie. Which means it must be time for another round of these aren't facts, they're just things you made up to justify your feelings. Now the often quoted statistic is that 70% of inmates come from single mother homes, which would represent about 840,000 of the 1.2 million people incarcerated according to the Department of Justice in 2021. Meanwhile, 70% of the estimated 19 million children raised in single mother homes would be about 13 million. And I'm not sure how Aaron's defining young men, but even if we adjust for that, it would still be an absurdly wrong number. Okay, so Aaron misspoke, but what about that 70% statistic? That has to be correct, right? After all, it's repeated everywhere. Women gotta hold themselves accountable because 70% of boys in jail are raised by single mothers. Single sisters are to blame for the high population of men in jail. 70% of youth in juvenile delinquent facilities come from single mother homes. 80% of all youths in prison are from single mother homes. If you compare a single mother, is 80% chance of going to jail. 80% of all prison inmates came from single mother's homes. I did the research, 80% of black males who were in jail come from single mother homes. And we are filling up these prisons with fatherless kids. Okay, so we're not sure if it's 70% or if it's 80%, if it represents all prisoners, just young men, or only black men. But what we do know is that prisons are full of young men from single mother homes and the women folk are to blame for it. And this statistic has been copy pasted across every website for fathers' rights groups and family law attorneys representing fathers. But notice that it's different. It's 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions, not prisoners. But even that claim is wrong. It comes from this 1987 report from the Bureau of Justice Statistics. And it says across all juveniles in state-operated institutions, 70% of them did not come from a two-parent home, which includes single mothers, but also single fathers, homes where the child was raised by other relatives, and foster homes. In fact, single parents were only 54%, and of that, 48.4 were single mother households. But it's important to remember that this is 35-year-old data about juveniles in juvenile institutions, not prisons. And they only surveyed about 10% of juveniles, so while it might be indicative, it should not be taken as a concrete fact. Now, the statistics on inmates are actually fairly easy to get, thanks again to the Bureau of Justice Statistics. And in 2002, they showed that the number of offenders from single mother homes actually dropped from 41 to 39%, and went back up in 2016 to 41.1%. Meanwhile, homes with a father represented 40.7% of all offenders. It's almost neck and neck. So while prisons may not be overflowing with offenders from single mother households, it does represent an elevated risk about two to three times. And since your lifetime incarceration risk is about 5%, what that means is instead of 70% of children raised by single mothers going to jail, actually well over 80% will avoid ever seeing a jail. Okay, but that still means that single mums offer the worst outcomes, right? Well, studies have also looked at incarceration rates for different household types. And they did again find that three times risk for single mother households. And you can see that when we adjust for social, educational, and economic disparity, that risk drops to about two times. But before single fathers start to crow about this, look what happens when dad gets a new partner. They offer some of the worst outcomes. And when we remove the economic advantage that single fathers often have, you can see that single fathers with a new partner offer the worst outcomes, beating out single mothers, single mothers with stepfathers, and even children not raised by either parent. So if we really care about childhood outcomes, we need to be teaching men not to ignore their children the minute a new woman shows up. And even if we just want to focus on improving the outcomes for single mother households, then we need to talk about what causes them, which is absentee fathers. Because absentee fathers are a huge problem. Anywhere between a fifth and a quarter of all fathers have no contact with any of their children. And this is often framed as, oh, my baby mother or my B of an ex-wife doesn't let me see the kids. But that's also not true, because when we look only at men with high levels of custody, 40%, almost half of those who start out with weekly contact, virtually abandon their children within eight years, having little to no contact. And studies have looked into the risk factors for father abandonment, and found that once again, top of the list is fathers who have a new partner. And if they have a child with that new partner, then virtually all of them abandon their previous children. So if we really care about improving childhood outcomes, then we need to stop talking about single mothers and instead talk about the disgusting attitudes and behaviors in fathers that treat their children as disposable. 